everyone, uh, welcome back to Bert's Crafts Chats. Uh, this is episode two. Uh, I'm sorry it's been a while since I recorded my first episode. I haven't A really had a lot of time and B haven't really felt that I've got that much to show you. So what I've decided to do is um show you what I'm currently working on at the moment and uh, any progress that I've made on projects that I spoke about last episode. Um, and then I'm also going to show you some things that I've made previously that I think that are great projects for this um, time of year. So I thought that would be um, a good idea. I think um, I'm going to start with those. So let's get going. OK, so the first thing um, I've got to show you is this um, scarf. So this is what it looks like, um, can you see? So this is called the, I'm just looking down at my phone because I can't quite remember. Um, this is called the Pirate Scarf. Um, this is by uh, The Frosted Stitch, she's on Instagram. Um, I believe it uses, let me just check, um, 15 mini skeins and then a full skein of colour so essentially it's just sort of like a gradient of colour so you could do this in any colours you want you didn't necessarily have to use 15 mini skeins you could use three and then just keep building it up so um i think that's lovely for this time of year and it's a bit different from sort of the normal um shawls and things you see in the sense that it's um a scarf um and it is quite sort of lengthy so um you can also if you wanted to you could double wrap it to make it um lovely and warm so that's the first thing i wanted to share with you um and then the next one um which i think is great for this time of year is the flat iron shawl this is by tony uh tl she's tlc yarn crafts on instagram she's based over in um america um i made this one last year i think um it's a lovely large sort of triangular wrap shawl now the one thing i would say about this one let me just pop it on you can do sort of all, all sorts with it is that it is all in US single, UK double crochet. So it's quite a lengthy um, project. Um, I mean, once you get going, it's okay, but you do feel at times that maybe it's not really going at the pace that you'd want it to. Um, but then the results of it are just, you know, fantastic. So um, this uses three full skeins um of fingering weight yarn and the yarn i used for this was by um woolly rebel yarn co they're on instagram um they're amazing two sisters run uh the business i think and they make beautiful sort of uh these are quite subtle um colors but they do beautiful like neon um colors as well so i'll link uh them down below I'll link uh, the Instagram pages to whoever I'm referring to and um, the yarn if I can. I don't think I mentioned with this one, this was all just sort of random mini skeins that I had that I made into like a colour fade of my choice and then it was just a grey um, main skein. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is an item of clothing. Obviously these are items of clothing but they're sort of an accessory more than they are um, an item of clothing and that is a jumper which is this jumper oh, it's got a lovely something on it there uh, probably dog hair um this is the far away jumper by iron lamb um it's a really easy pattern uh for beginners um you can basically do it in any colorway that you want um i used hand dyed uh gains for this section and then this is just a stylecraft um dk um 
the great thing about this pattern, if you have got a bit more experience, is that you can sort of alter it to fit you. So I think I did a bit more length in the body and the arms because I'm quite tall. Um, so yeah, you can basically just keep going and then you just finish it off with like a little um, ribbed section. And I get a lot of wear out of this jumper. I am contemplating making another one, um, maybe in sort of like greys and pinks and greens. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I really love that. And again, I'll link um, Iron Lamb down below. She, you've probably heard of her. She does amazing patterns. She's also got the granny, um, I think it's the granny go round jumper. I've made a top of that. Um, it's a summer top though, so I think it's gone away now. But yeah, great patterns. Uh, great for if you want to start making your own um, garments. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is in this little bowl. Um, it started off as a Blake cowl by, I can't remember the name of the person. I'll link it down below. Anyway, I didn't, it wasn't really working for me and I didn't, um, I liked the stitch, but I didn't really feel that it demonstrated the yarns very well. So I decided to try and, make up my own pattern um so i started this and then um i've been doing something else alongside it so it's sort of taken a bit of a back burner to be honest but this is still intended to be a cow so that is as far as i've got with it now the blake cat pattern i think usually uses um 10 mini skeins so i'm going to try and i'd already picked out the colors that i wanted to use so i'm just using them uh, the same in here so if i just pop it on the idea is is it will just sit sort of nicely um but it'll almost be like three times the length maybe i think i've used how many colors have i used in it so far three so i think i've got f another color here to use which is like the nice minky color um and then i've got six more Oh, that should put, that looks quite nice with this, doesn't it? So, yeah, so I'd sort of made it up. Um, it's basically just half treble crochets, I think, and then um, just like a beanie type. Sorry, there's somebody outside. Like a beanie type um, stitch here to give it a bit of texture. And then I've just sort of variegated the ways in which it... Um, changes colour. So yeah, uh, I'm using a four and a half millimetre hook with that one. So yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you, but obviously it's not really a pattern or anything that you can follow. Okay, so the next thing I've got to show you is also by um, the Frosted Stitch. This is the Endless Seasons Light. Now she does an Endless Seasons, which is using DK, uh, and then an Endless Seasons Light. Uh, I've made both in the past, but I don't think I've actually got any to show you because I think I've made them for gifts previously. Um, so they both use three skeins of either um, DK or fingering weight yarn. And what I've done with this one is I've added, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. I don't think you can see it quite well. I've added... Um, I've held it double with some mohair. So it's gives like this nice mermaidy effect. It's quite a subtle fade, this one. Um, but if you could feel it, it is so soft and squishy. Um, again, that's been something that's been sort of sat waiting to be finished for a while. But now that I've seen it again, I kind of want to see if I can get it finished. So. Um, I've used yarn from Boner Yarns, um, The Wool Shed, Live at the Wool Shed, and then Cheshire Yarn Company again. I think I mentioned them last video. Um, and then, so this is, I think I've used the remnants of the whatever was left in something else. Um, but this is the sort of last purpley colour that I'm using. And then the mohair that I've been using is the just got it's actually used quite a, f a few of these it's the drops kid silk uh now the only thing i would say with that is it's very fluffy i feel like i'm now covered in my hair um 
and I don't know whether some people might find mohair quite itchy. I've not worn it yet, obviously, because it's not finished. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll report back on that. And the last project I've got to show you is something I showed last week, so I'll only show it briefly, but I've been trying to get it finished, is this, uh, gosh, I'm midway through a row, beautiful blanket. Um, again, I've obviously still got the projects ongoing from last week, but I didn't think there was much point in showing you them again, but I have sort of dwindled down what's left. So um, I really don't think there'll be much more left to go on that. So I'm sort of hoping to finish that and then it will be um, deciding what border to put on it. So I'm thinking I'm not going to save, I'm not going to hold back any of that because I want to make sure that I've got the most in it as possible. So it'll probably just end up being maybe like a treble just a couple of rows of treble around the edge because I really don't think it needs much because I don't want it to take away from that. I did contemplate potentially just not putting a border on it. So when it's finished and I've sewed the ends in, with um, the ends, some of them I've um, managed to catch as I've gone through and then others I've left loose. So it will be a case of sewing those in and then seeing how I feel about it um, and deciding whether I want to put a border on it or not. Okay, so the last um, yarn related thing I wanted to talk about this week was um, an item that I've actually started and finished in between um, recording last episode and this episode, and that is the undulation wrap um, or shawl. I will try to put a picture of it in here um and link to the designer on instagram now it's currently blocking and i kind of want to show you it when it's um finished and then talk through how i found um the making progress but what i did want to show you was the yarns that i'd used for it and then you'll get sort of a gist of how it's going to look so it'll be like a sneaky preview for next time so these are the colors that i used in that one they are all by um, Liv at the Wall Shed. Um, that is her little logo. So I'll link her down below. Those are the last ones. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold them all up together. So that just gives you sort of the general vibe. Um, and then, like I say, I'll insert a picture of the undulation wrap and then you can um, have an idea of how it looks. And then in next episode, I will... Uh, show it to you finished um, and then finally um, I had a little rummage in my yarn collection because I like to do that from time to time even though I've got so many projects on the go there's nothing better than um, just having a look through your stash um, am I doing that thing again where I'm not looking at the camera I don't know am I supposed to be looking at the camera I can't remember anyway um, so I've picked out a few um, yarns that I wanted to just show you and get your feedback on really and your ideas uh, either to make another undulation wrap or to make either another uh, one of these uh, because although I said it was sometimes tedious I think it's such a beautiful thing and I do wear mine a lot at this time of year um, so I'm thinking one sort of in a different colourway might come in handy. Um, she says that she's going to show you yarns that are of a very, very similar vein. Um, so I've picked out five because the undulation wrap uses five. Now, obviously, that only uses three. So it will be um, I'll decide at some point, I think, what I want to do. So um what I'm going to do is show you the combinations that I've picked and then um, tell me below in the comments um, which one your faves are. So these three, so they're all fingering weight because that's what both um, patterns need. Um, so these five are all by um, Siobhan Crafts. Again, I think I spoke about her last week, so I will link her down below again. So that's option number one. And then option number two is, again, I've just picked out sort of some that I think would work well 
um, together so I'm not necessarily going to use them all so it's sort of like these um, sorts of tones some from here this one is Attic Spin Dye um, we've got Loom Wool and then um, they're all Loom and then we've got um, some Beehive yarns there as well and um, in the undulation map you can use um, there's two sections in it I think where you can get away with using minis so I picked out these from my collection as well um, they're also from Beehive so I thought those colours could work really nicely together so that's option two and then option three is sort of like a greeny um, natural looking colour palette shall we say these are all biff sugar and then i've got a couple of minis um they're probably biff sugar as well i don't think i wanted that green i think that green was to go with that um so these are the colors i've picked out for that you can't see them very well because of the labels so it was those sorts of colors so um and then again potentially using the minis i know actually on on this one um you can use a mini on the edging so i'd also picked these out uh, i think i showed you these last time i got them recently um so potentially use one of those as um a border so i think that's everything um yarn related the last thing I wanted to mention, there's two things actually, I wanted to say thank you for all your views on um, the previous episode, um, thank you for those that commented, um, thank you for those that have subscribed, um, please subscribe if you haven't so that you will um, be aware when uh, this episode comes out and when future episodes come out and I think there's some sort of notification bell that you can set up to alert you when I've released um, a new video and the last but not least thing I wanted to talk about was uh, a book that I'm reading so um, I mentioned last time that I um, use crochet a lot um, for my mental health and um, I find it relaxing and I enjoy the sort of rhythm of it and um, the escapism and being able to sort of express my creativity creativity through choosing um, colours. Um, another thing that I like to do is read. Um, and um, obviously, if this isn't of interest to you, then, you know, you're more than welcome to sort of stop watching now. If you're only interested in the crochet, that's fine. Um, oh, just bear with me a second. My phone's Sorry, ringing. That was my husband saying he's coming back from his dog walk. Um, yeah, so reading. Um, I have read on and off basically all my life. Um, I struggled to read, get into reading once I'd had my daughter because I just didn't have the energy to do it. Um, obviously in those first, or oh, in that first year, I suppose, of not being able to sleep, any sleep that you could get, um, you wanted to get. So, um, I didn't find myself sort of reading, um, to relax. Um, so in the last sort of year or so, um, I've really sort of got back into my reading. Um, I've joined my local library. My daughter, who is three, is also um, a member of the local library. So we go up together and pick books. Um, and I found that a nice way to potentially um, discover books that I wouldn't necessarily pick myself. Um, another great thing is with our local libraries is you can search their online catalogue um, and 90% of the time if there's a book that you want they will have it or they will be able to get it in for you. Uh, sometimes it, I think it's about 80p if you want to order it from another branch um, so that's great. So the one I'm reading at the moment is called, um, well it's backwards isn't it, but uh, The Lost Cafe Schindler. Um, I'm about just over halfway through. Um, it's very interesting. It is about um, uh, the history of a family, a uh, Jewish family, um, during um, 
the First and Second World Wars and afterwards, and it's told from the perspective of um, the relative that's living now. So she's basically written the book about her um, ancestors. So it's very interesting. Um, and if you sort of enjoy, I suppose, this sort of genre of book, um, it might be interesting to you. It's quite sort of history heavy. Um, the story of um, the First and Second World Wars quite interests me. So hence the reason that I picked this book up. But it's it's sort of more than that. It's sort of about the ties between families. And um, yeah, it's a really interesting book. And I have thoroughly um, enjoyed reading it. So yeah, um, it's just another thing reading I think that you can do to um, rewind, um, rewind, unwind and um, relax and alongside my crochet. Um, I really enjoy doing that. Okay, um, I think that's everything I've got to talk about this episode. Like I said, I'll try and link everybody below that I've mentioned. Um, remember to like the video if you like it, comment, um, any comments, let me know um, your preferences for the yarn for the next project and then you might see something next time and um, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, bye!